Shalom, beloved. A word. Yahuwah gave me a revelation I want to share with you. <clears throat> Spiritual wickedness in hot places. Spiritual wickedness in hot places. You know, we read this, we know this for a certainty, and yet when we get it in real time, when we see it in our daily walk, we may not always attribute it or recognize it as being part of the same thing. What do I mean? You can work jobs where there is spiritual wickedness in high places. The supervisor, the so-called boss, the people who see you doing what you're supposed to do and doing it well, that spiritual wickedness you 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 become attacked by them they want to betray you and they will try to get very very close to you to do so you know if you think about it a lot of times people certain types of people they want to attain these high positions where they have authority and power over people where they can determine whether you can work in peace or whether it's stress and strife, whether or not you even keep your job. If you are good at what you do, many of them will try to steal your ideas and scar and mar your name. They look for reasons to find a way to bring you down and destroy you. And it's spiritual wickedness and high places. You can be shocked when you see that you have such good ideas and such good skill sets that the boss wants to bring you down, not because you're doing anything wrong, but because you're doing it so right. Spiritual wickedness, and it's walking close to you. It's coming in the room. Now, when you think about Yeshua HaMashiach, and his 12 disciples. One of them had a devil. He was spiritual wickedness in high places because you see, he's walking with the word of Yah. He's walking, talking, communing, dwelling. He held the money bag. He sat and ate with him. He was in high places, but it was spiritual wickedness in that high place, the one amongst the 12 disciples. And to take it a little higher, this betraying spiritual wickedness that was in Judas Iscariot, those who had commissioned him to be a betrayer were also sitting in high places. This was the high priest and the, the Pharisees, the Sahendran, who had met together to take Yeshua HaMashiach out. Reasoning they're wrong, considering it right that one should die to save the nation. And in truth, they were jealous because he had pulled the people away from their so-called vanity and power. Spiritual wickedness in high places. If you're on a job, or if you're in certain situations and you start noticing spiritual attacks, you will also see that a lot of times the people that you think should have been so supportive, so understanding, like those that set on this hindrance, are the exact ones that are attacking you. Yes, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. You see, Yeshua HaMashiach went through it. When he told us he was tried on all points, he knows our weaknesses. That's why he took on that robe of flesh. He understands. You know, I had an instance like that, very recent spiritual attacks, affliction, if you will, but the affliction that it put on me because it was high places that it was coming from. It was coming from people in positions of high places. And the better I worked, there was one who wanted to steal the work, wanted to take all the credit. And when I would not concede that which I had done, 
they wanted to have a meeting about it because it's that good that's evil spoken of that the Lord speaks on. But I'm going to tell you something that I saw. You know, that spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm sitting in a meeting thinking I've gone above and beyond to do something right. How did this thing get turned around and look so wrong, Lord? And I had to sit at a table. He prepared a table for before me in the very presence of mine enemies, three people. One of which told me, I don't even know why we're here. I don't, I don't know why we're here. It doesn't make sense. The first supervisor, I don't know why we're here. I didn't want to be here. Okay. But they want to have this meeting because I wasn't going to allow for the lie that this other one wanting to destroy what I did and at the same time using everything I did to try to pass it off as their own and acting as though I'm being insubordinate when in reality you're trying to steal something that was never yours. The irony of it was when the meeting started, the one who leveled the first attack against me was the exact one who had just said, I don't know why we're here. I don't even want to be in this meeting. I didn't call it and I don't see what the problem is. The irony of it was they were the first one to level the first stone at me. But I'm going to tell you something that I learned. Even in the book of Isaiah, he said, oh, they will surely gather together against you, but not by me. That's what the Lord said. In that moment, in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, this is ugly. This is ugly. I knew about this one and I knew about that one. But this one pretended to be close to me. They pretended to understand this is Judas right here because they attacked when the other ones came. But you see, every attack that they gave, let me tell you something about the power of the Lord. When he says he transforms our minds, okay, every lie that they came up with, he brought me perfect recall of the meetings, of the moments, of the emails. I could pull them up and everything they said. I was knocking it down. What do I mean? Spiritual wickedness in high places, beloved. But you see, what the devil means for our bad, Yahuwah turns it around for our good. In the end, the one at the highest position of all, when he couldn't get me in, and realize, she's sitting here recalling it, recalling it until it stopped their mouths. They got quiet. The one with the most authority just got up and left. I originally set out there feeling a totally attacked, but my first thought was, yeah, I know I didn't do anything wrong. And this woman over here tried to steal my work, pass it off as her own, and think that because she has a higher position than me, she can threaten me in this meeting somehow to make me concede that I'm being insubordinate because I won't give you credit she put mine down and then changed it around and tried to put her name on it. And no, 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 no. I can identify every thought, every inspiration. I can tell you from the first letter to the dot at the end of the sentence. I know where that word came from and who did it. What's my point? Spiritual wickedness in high places. It walked with Yeshua on the below you. And it can walk amongst us too. Do not be surprised. But Yah will show up and show out. He will bless us and give us the commands of our minds to where we sit in there like after it's all said and done. Ah, what? What? And you're doing the talking and you're, but you know something is happening in this room. I have just transformed. He takes you from victory to victory and glory to glory. You start transforming instead of conforming to a lie. And because of what Yeshua HaMashiach told his disciples, he said, through my word, thou art clean. What does that mean? Do you know you will hear the lies people tell? It's like you're drinking spirit and life when you're reading the word of the Most High. It's spirit and life. That's spirit and life. What does that mean? You got 100% juice. These people bring in Kool-Aid. The lies are like Kool-Aid. This thing got no... Buy, what? 
you your discernment will become so sharp. So sharp. But does the enemy come in? Yes, he does. No, I haven't been here because the attack was vicious. The attack was vicious. It can come from friends, so-called. It can come from people at your job. And that Judas, that Judas, whoo, I know there wasn't no problem. I don't even know why we're here. That's the one that's plotting on you. The one that gets up close on you. Remember, he sealed it with a kiss. Judas came up and kissed him on his cheek. One sitting here, I don't even know why we're here. Now, to finish, that bread of life, that word of spirit and life that is in us, is so powerful. It is so powerful, beloved. Not only does it transform us, it is transformative in and of itself. What do I mean? When you think about it, when Yeshua HaMashiach was feeding the multitude, he had five fish, two loaves. He prayed over it first. He prayed over it first. Not only did the five fish feed the multitude, when they gathered up the pieces, it was 12 baskets full. What are you saying that for? A lot of times, beloved, when we share these words with one another, when we share these truths with one another, this bread of life that I give you, that's the bread that came down from heaven. It's Yeshua HaMashiach. If we think with the worldly mind and we look at this little tinky winky loaf we hold and called us, we think I can't do nothing with this. It's just a little thing and it's too many of them. Mm -mm. That transformational power, this one seed, can create a forest. And when it's all over, you got to pick up the pieces left behind. And there is more left than what you gave out because it's transformational, beloved. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I just want to share there are. Uh, there is spiritual wickedness in our places, and he comes in. When that word say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not on our own understanding. In that moment, he gave me perfect recall to where every time a charge was leveled, I went right back to the moment, or I went, it just, it became so accurate, I was being transported while still being there to the exact word spoken, the exact thing written, the exact date. He came in and went above and beyond anything I ever thought, hoped, or imagined. When he said, I'm going to make it ahead and not to tell, he did not mean, well, because that person has such a high position over you, well, that one is the head. No, 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 he didn't. If you are not wrong, if you've done no wrong, it doesn't matter who it is. When he said, head and not the tail, three people, three people, union reps there demanded an utter word. I've heard more words come out of a grave that's been laying for a thousand years in a place called I don't know where. Not one word came out of that man's mouth. I felt abandoned, but let me tell you something. I was not alone and neither are you. Though they gather together, they shall surely gather together against you, but not by me. And those that raise up, you shall condemn in judgment. Yes, beloved, yes. And I'm going to tell you something. He is with us, particularly close when you feel like you're all alone. When you think, oh, my God, it's over. The big dogs is gathered around. The big dogs. And some of the dogs... I never thought you would have done it. The Judas, oh, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. If they did it to the teacher, they'll do it to the people. But guess what? More than conquerors, victory to victory. And if it's hot in that stove that you're in, darling, let me tell you something. Not only is a breakthrough coming, Look out for your blessing. Look out for your blessing because the saw, the, the law of sowing and reaping is about to kick in on those who have done your evil. May Lord have mercy on them, but let his will and not my will 
be done. Those who have done you evil, who have plotted your destruction, let the will of Yah, not us, Yah's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Beloved, thou art clean through his word. Your mind will get clean. You see better. You think better. You're quicker. Even when you're all upset, he will come in and show out and do above. He will come straight through. You work right out your mouth. Redirect your mind, your eyes. Be blessed and know for a fact. Thou art clean through his word. And that transformation, you lose things, you think about it, you find it. You sit somewhere, he start opening your eyes to who people are, your ears. Your ears become a tune. This person, these words, they speak as dead words. You ever listen to something? It's just dead words. Well, this is just nothing. That's because you don't, you, you're infused with spirit and life. So if you're hearing conversations around you and wonder why you don't want to be bothered, you fill with 100% juice, pure life. They ain't talking nothing but Kool-Aid, beloved. It's a word, beloved. Shalom.